It is almost noon. I've been hard at it this morning since about 5 a.m. Uh, Scott's here from Tungaloy. Today we are finally going to start working on the brake. Uh, so here's the program. Everything is here. The uh, but we have to proof or change a lot of settings. You know, the speeds and feeds and uh, make sure everything's working properly. Uh, of course, this is a simulation. But once I put it on the machine, the machine interprets everything a different way. Um, so all that stuff we need to make sure that works properly. So right now what I need to do is I need to uh, change the speeds and feeds because I don't have that in here. Those of you that don't know what it is, uh, it's how fast the machine or the tool is going to engage the workpiece, how deep, how fast, and all that good stuff. So. The, the easiest way to think about it is if you're cutting your, your grass and if your grass is really short and it's dry, you can go pretty fast. If it's still the same height, but if it's wet, which would be a different type of material, uh, it, you can't go as fast, right? It's going uh, to build up. It's, gonna, it's just not going to cut as good. Or if you have a really tall, really tall grass, and wet that would be the ultimate worst case scenario right so what you do if you can't make your uh so one thing you can do is right you can race your lawnmower so you don't cut as as, as deep and you can also take quarter you know quarter cut or half a cut of the the entire uh width of the mower so that's really what speeds and feeds are uh obviously different materials require different speeds and feeds uh cutters there's just a lot that goes into it. I mean, there is a lot that goes into speeds and feeds. So that's why Scott's here. <laughs> We're gonna try and get it sorted out. So Scott is with Tungaloy and obviously he knows speeds and feeds. Not only does he know speeds and feeds, he also can tell me which tools work the best for the type of work that I'm doing. Because, you know, we're slotting, we're, we're milling on the flats, so, you know, we're threading. Uh, we're drilling, we're, we're doing all kinds of stuff uh, and not only is he helping me with uh, speeds and feeds and the tools that I should use to give me better results, we're also changing uh, or I should say optimizing the order in which the tools uh, work. So for example, you obviously want to drill before you bore. So this is, uh, is going to do the slotting, right? So it's going to do these four slots. This is chuck over here. Okay, that's the chuck. You want to start, you have to imagine, actually, I'll show you. Let me turn off that model. I'll show you. So, we have a full part, right? So, this one hasn't been machined yet. So, it is stiffer here. So, you want to start over here and work your way that way because it's stiffer, right? So, now it's doing the underside right so anyway it works from here and works its way that way here it looks on the bottom but on the lathe it's actually going to rotate 180 degrees but that's how this uh, works so like I said we have to optimize everything so you know to uh, give us the best possibility of success because if you start slotting this over here you remove materials and then whenever you do these then it's going to be the part is going to be less stiff and of course now it's doing the uh, 20 degree ports all right okay and I don't know if you guys caught it but there is a problem with the next tool pad <laughs> I just caught it right now just as I'm showing you let me go where is it where? right here <laughs> isn't that supposed to happen and of course, it gives me a big red uh, notification right here. It just plows right through the <laughs> through the workpiece. <laughs> that would not be a good thing. So this is why we have to do all this. Uh, something happened here, and I actually didn't catch it here. I caught it at the machine. It gave me a. It say that it's supposed to go 70 inches deep, and I'm like, holy crap, that ain't right. Uh, so I thought it had something to do with the post processor, which is the uh, what tells the uh, 
simulation is here, but then the post processor is what turns everything into G code. And I thought it was an issue with the uh, post processor, but no, it's it's here in the simulation. So you wouldn't believe this, but that's good news. Because <laughs> if it's here, then I can simply fix it. Oh, here it comes again. <laughs> anyway, whoa, here it comes again. It's raining tools. <laughs> but anyway, that's what we're working on today. So. We're going to be doing this and then we're going to go back to the shop and we're going to start working on uh, proofing this program so we can hopefully, finally, start making some breaks. How long does something like this take? I mean, it's not like minutes or even well, hours. Well, because, because you're starting up from scratch, um, it's definitely significantly longer. Normally, if you were just doing this part, whenever you get this up and going, all the tools ordered, it'd probably take less than a couple hours uh, to get everything set up from, from changeover to changeover. Uh, but that's if you had a machine shop already up and going. So that's just the thing um, from scratch. Now you're talking weeks. How long is it taking you weeks? Right? No, I'm talking about like, uh, there it goes again. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm gonna stop. Typically, so if you're going to set up a new part, I would say. Um, no, right now, this, I'm talking about this part to set it up. Uh, you think, I to, mean. To it, prove it, it out it, would probably be an all day process. Probably. If, if, if you were hand in hand yeah, knowing that's, exactly That's what, what I'm thinking. It, it'd probably be a couple of days at least just to get the brake this uh, portion the right. main body the right. main uh, for all three components yeah probably probably a good solid two days uh, yeah so so and that's assuming everything goes like expected right i mean there's all kinds of things that can happen so anyway that's what we're doing today uh i think there's i don't know if there's any work going out there today on the electrical because you guys uh, you guys already know how that's going uh but anyway that's what we're working on finally finally we're gonna start working on trying to get this break making done. chips well i've been making chips but not break on chips. yeah not on the break we need to make brake chips all right so this is part of what can happen so everything looks correct okay so this is the edge that i selected right here this one right here okay right there you can see but on my offset I meant to put 35 thousandths <laughs> see that line now instead of 35 thousandths I put 35 inches that's why the tool was going all the way up all the way down obviously the lathe doesn't have that much travel. That's why these programs are very valuable, right? You want to do everything in 3D. You can see what's going on. All right, now we're going to simulate it again. And now it's doing what it's supposed to do, which is milling the flats. See that? So I'll give you a side view so you guys can see what's going on. All right, so this is what this tool is doing. And you can't see. You'll see the other side. There, it's gonna come in and it's gonna cut those flats like that. Perfect. Now we are good. <laughs> One little typo, uh, but like I said, that's this is why you gotta proof the programs. Because if I had just went to the machine and put this program in and then just hit go, yeah, that's when bad things happen. So uh, a lot of you have actually warned me about this. Uh, and, but you know I'm aware I'm aware of the bad things that can happen so right now I'm cutting air on the machine which means I'm not engaging the material I'm uh, you know simulating everything and what happens I came in here in a hurry because I didn't when I checked this end mill was not long enough well it is long enough but this tool holder is interfering with the chuck so I had to stick out the end mill a little longer and then I came in here and instead of milling up high, I had to uh, change the offset to only 35 thousandths. Well, I was in a hurry, and instead of doing 35 thousandths of an inch, I did 35 inches. And you guys saw what happened. But again, no crash, nothing happened. Caught it, and if I had ran the simulation after I made the change, I would have caught it. But I was in a hurry, which is always a bad thing, because now I had to come back and fix it. So it's taking way longer than if I had just took the extra five seconds to make sure it was, 
you know, it was working properly. Man, we've been at it all day, me and Scott. <laughs> and uh, he's been extremely helpful. So, yeah. Uh, not gonna get much on this video, so I guess we'll continue this one tomorrow because I'm beat. It's uh, 6 p.m. I've been in here since 6 a.m. So I already put in 12 hours, and I'm probably gonna put in another four to six hours today. So yeah, days are getting long, but they feel short. <laughs> Scott, thank you, man. Yeah, you bet. I appreciate it. So Scott's been extremely helpful uh, with uh, speeds, feeds, and uh, you were also a machinist, right? Yes, sir. How long? I uh, started when I was 14. So this is year 22 now. So 22 years experience. Yes, yeah. So uh, that makes you 36? I am 36. See, I, I can still do math. Maybe I'm not that tired. <laughs> so, uh, so you work for, tell me, tell me who you are. Because uh, my viewers don't know who you are. Yeah. I know who you are. <laughs> Scott Mitchell, Tungaloy, America. Um, just a application engineer, outside sales person. So yeah, I'm just designed to, all I do is come out and set up tools and help get everything running and good to go. <laughs> yeah, man. And he's doing an excellent job. I mean, I'm, I always tell people, I'm not the smartest guy in the world, but I have their phone numbers. So he's been extremely helpful. We're here running parts and Scott wanted me, uh, he's teaching me how to check these inserts. So what is it that we're checking for? So right now, we've only cut a couple of parts. I'm checking to make sure that there is no chipping on the insert and there's no heavy flank wear. Like as if somebody took a, a file or sandpaper or a die grinder and really kind of got to look at it where it catches the light to make sure there's no chipping right here. And there's no flank wear. There's no kind of shininess to it. Uh, we just checked the drill. We did realize after quite a few parts uh, and setups and everything that one of the corners was chipped, but it's, it's on the backside. Um, we did. We have been cutting aluminum and everything, which that drill is not really designed to do, but uh, it'll still be good. You can get a few more parts out of it. But we're just going through, and now that the program is set, all of the work offsets are set, everything is good to go. He's ready for cycle start. Want to double check and make sure that everything is good. Uh, drills, end mills, threading inserts, everything. Um, that way he can literally shut the door, hit the button, and he doesn't have to sit here and baby this thing. So. Okay. You good to go? All right, man. Thank you. Yeah. So, yes. Uh, finally, we approved the program, tweaked it, uh, optimized it. It still can be optimized a lot more. But right now, we're just gonna make some parts. And when I say we're making parts, I'm making some tapered easy tuners. Okay. Uh, I want to get some of these done just so I can get some, uh, I guess, mileage under my belt. Uh, get really comfortable with the machine and all that. This is this is a fairly simple part. So that's what I'm doing, okay? Uh, I'm gonna run these maybe uh, tomorrow, run some parts, uh, run the original Easy Tuner. Uh, this one, this one's straight, it's very simple. And like I said, just get some mileage under, the, under, uh, under my belt with this machine. Kind of learn how to, things that to look out for and all that. Then I'm gonna start on the brake. This itself is going to take me a while on setup and proofing and all that, but like I said, this this is helping me in that process already. So technically, I'm, I'm already working towards the break by working on this. So anyway, again, Scott, thank you, man. You You've been extremely helpful. Yeah, absolutely. That's what we're here for. Thank you. Yeah. All right, time to run some parts. Well, I said I was going to shut it down a long time ago. It's 9.15, Scott just left. Uh, he would not leave until this thing was running just absolutely perfect. The, uh, the inserts that I had for my boring bar, they, they just weren't very good grade. And uh, the ones that he suggested that I get from them, they're not gonna be here until tomorrow or day after, but I was just trying to make it work. <laughs> he actually uh, remembered that in his car he had some inserts. He got them out and my goodness that just changed everything. So anyway, here's uh, some of the parts that I made uh, today. This is straight out of the machine. That's what they look like. So yeah, I'm extremely happy. But anyway, I gotta shut it down. I gotta go to the eye doctor tomorrow. I'm gonna get some new glasses. 
I never did get LASIK, at least I haven't yet. Uh, been putting it off. And um, anyway, I'm gonna have to wait a, a while longer. Uh, but anyway, I'm, I'm very happy with uh, how things are going. I mean, again, look at this. Look at this. That is straight out of the machine. So I'm very happy with, uh, with how the parts look. And uh, like I said, I gotta go to the doctor tomorrow. My family, <laughs> I'm home alone. Uh, my family went on vacation. Uh, we take a yearly vacation, but I didn't go with them this year because I got this going on. But hey, it is what it is. Uh, anyway, thank you for joining me, and uh, I'll be back tomorrow. I'll see what's going on here tomorrow. I got I got more parts to make. I can't even talk. I got more parts to make. Uh, I want to make a few more of these uh, easy tuners, and then I'm gonna make some straight ones. Like I probably told you that already. Uh, I can't keep track of what's going on. But uh, anyway, that's what I'm doing. And uh, anyway, I, I'm tired, can't even talk. Uh, I'll see you tomorrow. All right, so I'm back this morning. Well, it's actually 2 p.m. already. I had to go to San Antonio today. Oh man, I hate going into town. That kills all day. But anyway, uh, generator, I gotta fuel it up like I've been doing every day. And this thing, it's not, I don't even know how much fuel it burns, but it's quite a bit. Uh, it's got a huge tank. Um, I went ahead and ordered some diesel, and it's, I have, I filled up that, that uh, tank. I know it says gasoline on there, but it's a diesel tank. And you can tell by the liquid right here. You know, that's diesel. But anyway, so I've been filling it up, or topping it off, not every day. Um, I said the tank I figured out if I let the uh, generator run all day it burns up about 15% uh, and of course I don't know how big the tank is oil is good uh, so yeah it's uh, it's what you gotta do <laughs> or what I have to do my dumpster's almost full look at that beautiful PVC pipe that's all cut up that we had to take out of anyway you know what happened with that <laughs> uh. <laughs> but uh, ditch is almost covered up but uh next week we're gonna pour the concrete in here for the uh for the transformer and uh, of course they can't tell me when they're gonna set it i already told them i'm pouring concrete on monday and uh i asked them to tell me when they're gonna set the transformer but they told me they don't know so there's that I'm gonna go ahead and pour the concrete anyway but you know I mean this is expensive to run but you know it is what it is right gotta get it done somehow or another all right let me get all this going because I gotta fuel up the generator <laughs> I gotta drain the water from the from the uh, compressor I got a filter to dry the air and I also got an automatic uh, uh, water drain for this thing, which I still have to install. I might do that tomorrow, but right now I need to get in there and run some parts.